Welcome to Kaya 959 on the street on the air. My name is Bonolo Beasting and I am extremely excited because right next to me is the legendary Lebo M. Thank you so much for taking time to come through to chat to us. Ah, thank you for having me. When was the last time you came through to Kaya FM? I don't remember, honestly. But I, <laughs> it would have had to be 2019. Wow. Okay, so yeah. that's not that Yeah, that not that ago. far back. 2019, yes. 2020, somewhere there. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, are you voting on the 1st of November? <laughs> 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 I started up. Hey, smile. already bomb. You know, for the first time in the last two elections since uh, 1994, I found myself having this difficulty even processing the practical reality that I have to vote. Mm. Yeah. It's a very difficult and painful place to be when you look at uh, the tragedy of the last 27 years, just as a South African, and now I'm just a regular South I work for a guy named Lebo M, mm. so I know the, the difference. As a South African, it's a very painful tragedy to have to sit back and say, where are we, where do we come from, and what does the future look like, and the future looks bleak and dark, and it's getting worse by the hour. And then fortunately, because the guy I work for, Level M, is national property. Yes. <laughs> I can comfortably uh, speak in the most general sense as a South African and as a South African property that does not belong to any political organization. Mm -hmm. I think the moral decay of our country across the entire political spectrum is humiliating and embarrassing, mm. where citizens have to think hard about such an important decision a decision that has a powerful impact on our children's future. It should be automatic. You know, it should be, okay, I have these three options. Here's their agenda. Here's what they've done. Here's what they're promising to do. Of these three options, I'm going with this guy. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm, interesting, interesting. Mm. Now, on the topic of South Africa, you took South African music and you placed it on a pedestal internationally. So what's your view of South African music and African music currently? I prefer to respond differently. Yeah. South African culture, South African people, South African history took me and assigned me hmm. through my journey to represent who I am first as a South African, my culture, my country, and my continent. So I then have to also say I'm grateful and privileged that I come from a very proud history in the arts. I stand in the shoulders of great giants and not in that simplistic it's about mm. pick up this theory there. So I, I, I wish there was another word. Erin Hakai Bulatilae. Great people mm -hmm. sacrificed mm. their lives, their careers, both politically and in the arts. And I happened to be privileged while I was in South Africa before I go to exile to be at the right place at the right time with the right people. At age 14, I was working at the Pelican in Soweto. Hmm. The youngest nightclub, uh, yeah, na youngest nightclub performance singer in the country at that time. So when I say what I said earlier, I actually mean it because at 14, I was background singer to Maralo, Ben hmm. Sechma singer. I was exposed to the best in the country. Hmm. And when I left here, I'm the youngest of the previous generations that came. I come under your generation, I want to Huma Sikela. Uh, Miriam Makeba, Kaifa Semeleta, and had the privilege of being around them and learn. When I say I stand on the shoulders of great giants, it's not theory. It's not yes. philosophical. These are people I lived with. These are people I learned from. These are people I watched and observed their strengths and their witnesses. Thus, I plotted my journey through their experiences. I mean, you're talking about people that are part of the tragedy of this current dispensation, mm. iconic people. <laughs> Memi Re Makeba is the first African superstar in history. I agree. And the first African intellectual 
to stand and address the United Nations way back then. Something that should be so dominant in speaking to and teaching young people mm -hmm. about the past. Not everything about the past is guns and, and uh, stones. It's, yeah. it's some iconic moments that happen in, 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 in our country, in our history, before and after apartheid. Mm. My you, answer is very long because you asked a very important personal question. Yeah. Né? And I've been privileged then to having learned from the people I've learned, I've learned from to take the responsibility wholeheartedly and then build from there. Do you think there's more that we can do as South Africans uh, in actually <laughs> celebrating uh, these, these icons? I mean, once upon a time I said to someone that uh, why isn't there a Let and uh, uh, Kaifa Simenya musical? And it's just my opinion. I think as long as we don't have political direction and moral, uh, uh, the moral audacity to have an identity, which we don't, then we can't even think that far. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lebo M, um, uh, how important is family for you? Extremely important. Family, yeah. Extremely important. I grew up in exile. So mm. before exile, I'm your typical township boy whose parents are not my mother and my father. My biological parents are my mother and my father. Mm. Next door, Brashix was my father. Mm. Next door, so and so was my father. Three streets away was my father, meaning anything I do that is out of line, they could whack me. <laughs> <laughs> and I come home. <laughs> There's no lawyer that's going to be called. There's no 911 that's going to be called. No. There's no wincing. Mm. Same time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that, and then when you grow up like that, and then you're fortunate in exile, you grew up being uh, adopted, I was adopted by so many uh, families. Mm. So the idea of family is very central and critical to me mm. as uh, the perception, uh, against the perceptions that out, that's out there that led me to come visit you. Of course. <laughs> what, what's, a, what's a typical Saturday afternoon with you and your family? It depends on, obviously, schedule, but you're away from being busy, spending time with my kids, you know? And um, you know, Mosere mm. Khodilino. If you asked me that 17 years ago, you would have had a whole different answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I have one of these great privileges of being six, uh, 17 years sober this year. Mm. So I look at life differently. I'm a lot more relaxed, and I'm the kind of father that love the sound of children around me. Yeah. Ne? But especially my children. As long as Bali around, mm. I hang out four or five minutes. I I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how to occasionally go to the park, occasionally, you know, I got to be honest about that. But the idea of family to me is that which is all I know. Hmm. Uh, my upbringing, I come from a very not so privileged, extremely poor family. Hmm. Yeah? And having now grown up and having spent so much time with my parents before my father died, I've come to understand uh, my upbringing. So I don't impose, I try not to impose that which is not familiar uh -huh. to me. Yeah? As an example, I don't have a memory of my father going to the park with me. I don't have a memory of my father going to the movies with me. So I'm not going to, and I'm not trying to design a life that is based on something that is not part of my foundation. Uh -huh. yeah? But at the same time, we live in a different time and in a different era where our children are exposed to so much. Mm. The world has become as short as yeah. this. Yeah. My 10-year-old can actually post something, have a friend in Japan, have a friend in New York at 10 years old. Mm. You know, so the interconnectedness of family structure has changed drastically. So then I have great moments with my family. Yes. Restaurants. Uh, um, uh, when 
time allows, we watch movies at the house, you know. I become very indoor. Mm. Now, Lewu M coming home, I'm a huge fan. I watch this because I find it extremely entertaining. I all the time I live. I don't get my man. 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 I think it's absolutely, I mean, you know, to see, I love that. To see someone who's, yeah. who's achieved so much mm. and be so real, that process of actually deciding that, you know what, let me let people into my life. My personal life. How did how did that go through? There was a process. Let me explain that first. Yeah. When I was told that I will receive my first lifetime achievement award yeah. with uh, the multi choice lifetime award, yes. I believe it was. Yes, it was. I have children that still live in America, so it was the greatest moment in my life. Much more than hearing that I'm about to get a Grammy or any of those wow. accolades. Such that I wanted to share that moment with all my children. Yeah, so I flew my kids up, and there's two young young people that worked for me uh, that have decided to create. Because my family is quite dynamic. Mm. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you've, only, you've only seen in that in that show. There's only a third of my family and my children. I have two older children yeah. that are not in the show. Yeah? So basically, they sold to me something that Asana kind of liked. Yeah. Hey, Braleps, you know that no one actually really knows you in South Africa. Hmm. Girl, yeah, I know, and I like it that way. I prefer it that way. But then, but at the same time, we also know that you have the duality of having lived half your life overseas, half your life here, and no one knows how certain in township you are. Hmm. Girl, but why do I have to explain this? I know who I am and I know where I'm from. But then the second pitch that caught me and got my attention, you know, we have this idea. What if, you know, the world is coming out, it's going to come out of this. This is during COVID lockdown, by the way. Mm. We were the last party <laughs> with the uh, multi-choice awards yes. before the world shut yes. down. So this is right before all of that. It would be awesome because we know we also know how passionate you are about wanting to be just a South African and mm. be part of the discussions, be part of the agenda on societal uh, ills Issues, and yeah. otherwise. Né? And the greatest way we want to propose to you is your family. Hmm. Né? That's you having a conversation with the country around dynamics of family which is something else you're passionate about. Mm. And I said, I liked it. But the minute I, I said I liked it, I was not aware that I had just approved the reality show. But I actually liked it. I enjoyed it because they said something so profound to me that the country is going to come out of this stressed and traumatized. Mm. This was supposed to be a light moment and I like the angle of family discussions yeah. because my family allows the opportunity to, to have that from not only two generations, but three generations. You have my mother and you have my generation and you have my children. Mm. So I like that. And these three generations represents a journey of the people of South Africa in general. So I like that as a discussion point and it allows me to be part of, feel like I'm part of. Not the Lion King guy. Mm. Yeah, you know, mm. I have very strong views. I've always had strong views. I just didn't want to, I approve this because I just didn't want to just come out of nowhere and like everybody else start a political party or start a religious party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was happy to be part of a discussion. It was a brilliant idea and yeah. a great concept behind this until it got hijacked. Mm. Yeah. 